Hi beautiful people, it's Monday, welcome to the beginning of a new vlog. So, this week, I think I'm going to have a bit of a weird one. <laughs> just just kind of pre-warning you, this this week might be a bit odd. Um, because I am doing the Witchathon from Wednesday, which is a lot of fun, and I'm still trying to compile that TBR. I'll talk to you about that later. But, this week, I have had a... Um, a conversation with my doctor this morning about the meds that I'm taking. If you're new here, hi, I have crippling anxiety, but it's it's fine, it's fine. Um, anyway, so I've been taking these meds. You, If you've been with me for a while, you might remember. When I first started the meds that I'm, I'm on currently, um, they made me really foggy headed. Like I felt like I was off my tits for like the first, I'd say two to three weeks of taking them. Everything was a bit of a blur. I felt like I was living in a little bit of a bubble, but that was to be expected. I slept a lot and I was speaking to my doctor. I was like, I don't think these are working for me. Um, the side effects completely gone at this point. I've been taking them for over two months now. So you'd think by now I should, well, usually with meds, sometimes it can take up to three months, but sometimes in my experience, after a couple of months of taking new meds, you start to kind of get a feel for what they're like. This is kind of the third medication I've been on like everyday medication I've been on in the last five years since I was diagnosed with a generalized anxiety disorder. And he suggested before just completely quitting them and doing something new to increase the dosage, but with doubling the dosage, cause I'm on the low dosage at the moment and I can triple it if need be, um, but I'm just gonna double it for now. He suggested doing that, but he did say the side, of the, the side effects are gonna come back. So I might be a little bit of a zombie this week, which is probably perfect timing as it's almost Halloween. But, so that might make this vlog a little bit odd. So if I seem a little bit spacey and out of it, that's why. Also, I have family visiting this weekend. My mum and her partner, my little brother and my grandma are coming up to Edinburgh to see me at the weekend. So hopefully we'll be doing some stuff, some touristy stuff. Um, I might try and organise going to an escape room. I don't know. There's stuff in Edinburgh all the time, so I'm sure we'll find something to do. So I don't know how much I'll vlog this weekend, uh, but I'll try and get some bits and bobs. And yeah, I'm also going to be uh, kind of trying to just get my shit together a little bit, even though I'm taking these new meds, so I don't know how that's going to work. Um, well, not new meds, but increasing the dosage. Um, yeah, so as it's the Witchathon, today I'm trying to kind of compile my TBR for that. Also very aware that the Witchathon ends on the 31st, the end of the month, so I should have read all my TBR, wheel, well, Wheel of TBR, TBR. So, <laughs> let me talk to you about the books I'm planning on reading this week. It's a book ton, so strap on in. Okay, actually, let's start with the books that I've got left to read on my Wheel of TBR. So, I have... These three that I am going to be putting into the Witchathon. Well, no, that's not one. Get your shit together, Cody. Anyway, uh, these two are definitely going on the Witchathon. And then I have these three still to read. I'm about, about halfway through The Witches of Eastwick by John Updike. I really do want to finish this. So I might pick this up later today. The Instagram pick winner, if you are interested, it was between these two. I tried to do two similar photos, but my editing was kind of off on them. I'll put pictures up of the screen. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. Um, yeah, apparently I just edited them, edited them completely differently. But anyway, this one got about 70 or something likes after a week of posting. Whereas this one, which was the first one I posted, got like 90 something. So this one was the winner. So that's going back on the TBR shelves. And this one I want to read, but I can't fit it in really anywhere into the Witchathon. I figured there is kind of one that's like read a thriller, but this is more of a mystery crime kind of thing. So I'm hoping to read the rest of this and the, this whole thing by Wednesday, which I don't know if that's even possible because this is over 500 pages. But we'll see. And I've also got Mean Girls Club Volume 1 to read, which obviously I'm not going to be stressing about because it's literally like four pages. This is more of a sampler, if anything. So, it's Monday. The Witch Thun starts on Wednesday and I haven't even got my TBR together yet and I need to actually film that TBR video. And I figured I could maybe do that today. However, I want a witch's hat. I want a goddamn witch's hat. And I'm not okay with not having one for the video. I need my props, you know? So um, I thought I had one in the house. So I've been like looking for it, but I can't find it. So I'm gonna pop out. I need to do some shopping anyway. So I'm gonna pop out and get myself a witch's hat. 
I might have a look in the charity shops and see if there's anything that can help with this Witchathon TBR. Plan for today. I'm gonna go out and try and find myself a witch's hat and if I buy any books whilst I'm out, I'll come back and do a little haul for you. <laughs> Hey guys, so I'm back. I didn't do too much damage, but I do have a little haul for you. Honestly, I keep buying secondhand books like every week. It's getting out of control. I need to stop my TBR shelves. It's overwhelming. I need to stop. I'm aware. But anyway, here's what I got. <laughs> the first one I found was Moonrise by Sarah Crossan. And I've heard really good things about this. I'm not sure. I think it's YA. And it's about a relationship between two brothers, Joe and his brother Ed. Ed is on death row and Joe hasn't seen him in 10 years, but Ed's just had his execution date given to him. So they're spending kind of like a last summer together. I don't know. I just heard good things. And this is a beautiful yellow copy. And I'm like a magpie, so I just needed it, didn't I? But this is one that I have heard really good things about, so I'm pleased that I found this one. <laughs> this one, though, I'm so excited I found, is Haunted by Chuck Palnick. Um, so if you didn't know, he's one of my favourite authors, and this one is one of my favourite books ever. And look at this copy! Like, like with the eyes, I just, I couldn't resist it. I don't have an own copy of this until, obviously, I've just found this one. But as soon as I saw it, I like grabbed it because if this is the most messed up book I've ever read in my life, but it's my favourite. Like, I just, oh, I was so happy I found this. Oh my God. <laughs> so I've actually read this book a few times and it never fails to shock me. It's about a group of people who are given the opportunity, a group of writers are given the opportunity to go to a writer's retreat, but they're locked in this house um, with no way out and no way of getting any help um, with just them. There's, I don't think there's any electricity from what I remember. The food stores are getting real low. They're in there for ages but they're all competing to have the best survival story so when they come out of this situation they can get some fame. Um, it's so messed up and twisted what they do to each other and they all have nicknames. That's only really the names that you get are the nicknames that are based on some kind of tragic past that they have and it always flashbacks to what actually happened and how they got their weird nickname. Honestly, I think it's the first or the se first or the second chapter. There's a backstory about a guy who has an accident in a in a swimming pool. That's all I'm going to tell you, but if you've read it, you know like how messed up was that and it sticks with me. Like I'll never not get that like grotesque image out of my brain. But I love this book so much. It's not for the faint-hearted though, but as soon as I saw this copy, I was like Yes, praise Jesus. I finally found it second hand. Well chuffed. I also got a witch's hat. So I went to the pound shop and they only had like that shitty kind of black dustbin liner <laughs> kind of feeling plasticky stuff and I didn't like it. So I went to Tesco's and I found this one. And the thing is, like it doesn't really look great. <laughs> Basically, I have a big head and these are all for children. I should have known. I should have maybe gone and got one of those, you know, like uh, ones on a headband or a small one, but I wanted a proper one and this is the only one I could find that wasn't that awful plastic material. But when I try and properly put it on my head, I end up looking more like a gnome. Um, so yeah, but at least I have something for the Witchathon. Um, I'm also planning on doing some kind of makeup, aren't I? Because I can't resist. <laughs> So I'll show you that. I'm hoping to actually film it tomorrow now because it's like 3 p.m. and it, it's like nearly dark already. So I'm gonna get up early tomorrow to film a Witchathon TBR and then get that up before last week's vlog. Uh, the general consensus seems to be that my vlog's going up on a Tuesday or Wednesday is a good thing. So I'm just gonna keep doing that because I know so many people, people bring out vlogs and long videos on Mondays and my subscription box is always like full of people I want to watch so I end up having to just like watch them over a Monday and a Tuesday so I get it so I'll probably be posting it on Wednesday considering I'm posting this video I'm planning tomorrow um yeah I'm not all that happy with the hat now but it was last minute so I'm just gonna have to make it work just gonna pull a Tim Gunn you know make it work make it work even if I just have to kind of like somehow pin it to my head I don't know I also found something so I popped into Greg's and I found this little bat cookie how adorable I really didn't need it but it's probably gonna be delicious and I'm a sucker for anything that's creepy and cute um yeah so maybe like part of me is like 
I should probably say this and do it for an Instagram and like have this in the Instagram because that's what people do. But I'm not, I'm not that person really, am I? Delicious. So considering I've got like six or seven books on my Witchathon TBR that I'm starting on Wednesday, I best get these bloody books for a day. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna go and read some of the Witches of Music and I'll probably see you tomorrow. This isn't a cowboy hat, that didn't really work, did it? Anyway, I'll see you then. Hey guys, happy Tuesday. So you might be thinking to yourself, why are you wearing drag queen makeup with a witch's hat and eating a KFC at 3.30 on a Tuesday afternoon? Well, let me tell you, today has been a weird one. So I could not for the life of me get up this morning. So it's a little bit of a slow start, but I wanted to film my Witchathon TBR and I wasn't doing anything too crazy with my makeup. It wasn't gonna be like Spookathon where I'm doing any kind of like drippy skull thing. So I didn't think it would take me that long. So I filmed it, was pretty happy with it. Looked at it, it was out of bloody focus. <laughs> so I filmed it again. And then I've gone on my laptop to um, edit it, get it up today, because Witchathon's tomorrow. And the file's corrupted. Like I have the out of focus one, but it's it's really bad, guys. It's real bad. So I'm just giving up. I uh, am kind of bummed. So I got myself a KFC to cheer myself up. So I'm just gonna have a little mukbang, mukbang with you, and tell you about what I've read. So I finished The Witches of Eastwick, and oh my god, was this long-winded, guys! I didn't like this. I wish I had some tea to sip, but I've just got a Pepsi. So, I did not like this. At the beginning of this book, I was kind of like, okay, okay, this is going to be good because it was kind of feminist and it was about close female relationships and friendships and, you know, some kind of LGBT themes and I was in it and it had them witchy vibes and I was like, I know it might be a little bit slow to start, but I know where this is going because I like that movie. The movie is so different from this. The whole time I was waiting for this like major plot point to happen in the movie and it just doesn't happen. This amounts to nothing. And I didn't like the female the female relationships in the end. They didn't seem genuine. I didn't connect with any of these characters. They didn't feel like fully fledged women. The relationships they had with their friends were kind of strange as well. Like it didn't feel like genuine relationships that I have with my friends. It was all very much, oh, I love you. We're a sisterhood, we're a coven, right? Oh, the sun is doing a thing. But at the same time, there was lots of cattiness and jealousy and they were thinking really mean things about each other, which I don't think mean things about my friends. I don't know any women that do. So it just didn't seem very genuine. I think this guy tried to make it kind of very sensational and sensational even and shocking, but it just didn't do, it just, it just didn't feel like I was reading from women and all the feminist themes were just kind of clouded over with this like muddiness and it wasn't about women loving women because in this book they don't necessarily love each other that much it says they do but the way they act to each other and the way they think about each other I just really didn't like it and it was so goddamn slow some parts literally there were three to four pages of this bitch playing the cello three pages I mean if you're into music I get it but it was just her inner monologue about how she loves the sounds and what they mean to her and the emotions that they bring up and oh my god was this pedantic and long and nothing actually fucking happened. <laughs> so I would recommend watching the movie because it's strange and weird and crazy and amazing. The book would not recommend. I gave it a free initially on Goodreads because I was like, the writing style was quite nice, but no, it's a two star. Well disappointed. It took me so bloody long to read as well. So since I'm not putting up a TBR for which one, I will share with you my TBR now. So the first challenge is read a book that makes your woman happy. I'm choosing The Radleys by Matt Haig. Yes, it didn't win the Twitter poll, the other one won, but that's on here as well. And I really want to read it. I think it'll make me a woman happy because it's Matt Haig and I loved the humans. I loved his writing style and his humour and it's very British. And this is about, from what I'm aware of, two teenagers who become vampires but they live in this small town and it kind of causes some craziness and some chaos. I don't know, I just think it will make me warm and happy because his writing, from the humans anyway, was very heartwarming, sentimental, just goodness, but also hilarious. I'm hoping this lives up to that and it's the same kind of deal. Um, the one for read a book by candlelight. I chose a poetry collection, do myself a favour, it's kind of grubby, uh, but do myself a favour. 
because obviously I don't want to strain my eyes too much and this is going to be easy to get through. Also it's witchy and I loved her first poetry collection which was The Princess Doesn't Save Herself in this one. Very feminist and great. So yeah. For the one with paranormal elements, The Graces by Laura Eve. Obviously it's witchy so there's going to be some magic hopefully. And this one did win the Twitter poll between these two. It was real close, like for the majority of the time this one was winning. But then at the end this one pulled through. It was 51% and 49%, so real close. Um, so yeah, I'm going to read this one. For the Philip Horror pick, I have downloaded on script Saw Kill Girls. I, yeah, I want to read it, well listen to it. I think it's horror, it says horror on Goodreads in the tags, it also says YA and I think it has some fantastical elements. So I'll be listening to that throughout the week. It's it's all down to Books and Lala, she has me hyped for this and I've heard good things from a few people now so yeah, I want to listen to that one. And for the Honouring Your Ancestor one, you know, I was struggling with that because I was like, well, do I read Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes series? Do I read some Bronte or Austen? I could even read Dickens and I could even read Shakespeare, you know, like the older kind of writers that are very famous and very, very British. But I decided, and, oh, so I was also thinking about getting eight ghosts, wasn't I? But I had a look on script and it just occurred to me that probably the earliest kind of folk tale that the English have is the um, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. So I found a audiobook that has those stories that's narrated by Sean Frickin' Bean, which is just amazing. I'm from Yorkshire. He's a Yorkshire man. I just, the accent, it makes me immediately feel like I'm home. And it only has like two hours. It's only two hours long. So, I mean, I'm buzzing about that. So, yeah, I'm just going to read something very stereotypically British, but it inspired a lot of fantasy, didn't it? So, you know, I'm pleased. <laughs> and for the buddy read and for the group book, I am going to be reading The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. This is about a young girl who is accidentally fed moonlight and it gives her magical powers, I believe. Uh, I don't know if it's witchy or not, but we'll see. But it's middle grade and I love and miss the middle grade recently. So I'm excited. I'm also going to be buddy reading this. I just organised it with Anna from It's My Birthright. We're going to be buddy reading this. So technically we all kind of are, will be on Twitter. I'm sure, I'm assuming there'll be some kind of hashtag for it on on the Witchathon Twitter page. If, it, if there is, I will put it here. Um, so yeah, we'll be reading, a lot of bunch of us will be reading it, but it'd be nice to read it just one-on-one -on -one with Anna as well. If you haven't subscribed to Anna, go ahead and do it. She's freaking cute and amazing, and she has an amazing taste in books. She always reads ones that are a little bit, a little bit more obscure that I haven't seen everybody reading, and she's just real articulate and smart and cool. So go subscribe to Anna. I will link her in the description. Her channel is It's My Birthright. Yeah. So yeah, we're going to be buddy reading this. So that's my TBR. So, uh, now, like I said, I'm gonna go, Oh, well, this eyelash is just going somewhere. Where are you going, girl? Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna carry on probably wearing my hat, eat some KFC, and I'll, um, edit some of my videos, hopefully pick this up, and I'll let you know if that happens. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Witchathon day two. So yesterday I spent all my evening cleaning. I did get some reading done though, so I'll let you know what I read. Um, but I basically just completely redid all my shelves. So let's cut to that. So here's the before and here is the after. We're starting with white books. Then we've got some white cream, some red, some black. I don't, we are okay doesn't really go, but oh well. It's a hardback and that's a hardback shelf. And then I have greens, blues and kind of in the middle books. This is a bit of a mess down here still, but you can't really see that. But I have these prints from Ellie at the Storybook Daily Design on Etsy. She's a babe, she sent me them. So I have a discount code. All links in description. This one's a Robert Louis Stevenson quote and this one is a George R. R. Martin the Swan Oath that the Night Watch take. Also, my boyfriend was a babe and got me some pink roses, but he got me like three bunches. So this looks more like a bouquet at this point. <laughs> it's kind of insane. I've got my little crystal thing. Just some books from the TBR for this month. Nothing under here on the speaker, which is great. 
I've still got my makeup there. Graphic novels are the same. I've kept Waking Gods and Sleeping Giants in there because I don't have any graphic novels that I've read to kind of take up that space. So I figured I'd just leave them there for now. And then a little classic section. Yes, the stand and his dark materials is her hanging out at the back, but I've got a little classics part. Um, yeah, Jen Campbell's The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night isn't a classic, but it's a beautiful copy. So I wanted to put it somewhere. And then I just have a bunch <laughs> of some of my favorites in like pinks and purples and never more there. So I think it's looking a lot better. I'm just waiting for Tiberius to stop scratching at the TV. I swear to God, every fucking time. <laughs> anyway, I read some last night. I did a lot of cleaning and then I figured I'd just leave a little bit for this morning so that I could get in the bath and read some books. So I picked up the group book, The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. This is a middle grade about a young girl who lives in a village where every year a girl is sacrificed to the witch of the wood. No one's ever seen the witch, but they've never not sacrificed a baby. She sacrificed one year, only this witch is actually really, really nice and raises the children. And then once they're of age, I guess, takes them to a town and lets them kind of be fostered by nice families. And it's adorable and witchy and magical and amazing. There's a tiny dragon, there's a monster. However, the sacrificed child this year happens to be a young girl named Luna and the witch usually feeds her children starlight, but accidentally she feeds Luna moonlight, which gives you magical powers. So like she's coming into her powers and it's so much fun. And I have read the first 60 pages. So I'm on chapter nine. I just don't want to put it down. I want to keep reading it, but I'm doing my best not to fly ahead with it. And like, cause I'm buddy reading it and I'm the worst with buddy reads cause I always read ahead. So I'm trying not to, so that me and Anna from It's My Birthright, if you haven't subscribed, go do that. Link in description, she's the coolest. Um, hopefully, yeah, I'll be able to keep a pace with her and we'll read it at the same time. And then that'll just be a better buddy reading experience rather than <laughs> me just reading it on my own and then being like, oh, have you got to this part yet? Which has usually happened <laughs> in the past, but really, really enjoying it so far. I'm also listening to the audiobook of Saw Kill Girls. So as I was kind of doing my thing, cleaning yesterday and this morning, my house is spotless, guys, honestly. Like, I'm proud, but also I know it's like low-key not gonna last. <laughs> like, it's gonna be like an hour after my family are here and it's just gonna be bedlam all over again. Love that for me. Anyway, I am re listening to Saw Kill Girls and I'm bloody loving it. Oh my God, it's so good. I will say for the first few chapters, I was completely lost because I'm listening to an audiobook. I was like, wait, there's all these different characters and I can't remember who's who. But the audiobook is like 12 hours, I wanna say, and I'm about nine, I've got like nine hours left to go. So I'm about a quarter of the way through. I'm getting a vibe for who everybody is. Although I'm loving it so much because it's witchy, but also creepy and atmospheric. Um, I'm loving it so, so very much that I may order a physical copy to read it in physical form because like I said, the audiobook just keeps tripping me up a little bit. Every so often I'm like, wait, I'm lost and I have to re-listen to it. But I'm absolutely like enjoying it. So I'm gonna go read for a bit. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> So it's now Saturday and I haven't vlogged anything for the last couple of days because my family have been here and I've hardly done any reading. Um, so I'm still not really any further along in this, but I have read a big chunk of The Graces. So I have done some reading, which is good, but not as much as I would have liked. Um, so I'm now at page 279, not much to go. I am enjoying this, but there's been a few parts of it that I've been a bit like, mm, I'm not sure about that but it is unput downable, if that's a word. <laughs> like it's compulsive, I can't stop reading it. Like I was reading it for ages yesterday. And I still have this, so I'm listening to the audiobook. So I don't quite know how far I am into this one, but I will switch it up to the physical copy at some point so I can read it a little bit quicker. Uh, so the last couple of days I've just been hanging out with the family. We've just been out to eat, watch around Edinburgh, you know, visit some of the Harry Potter shops because there's a fuck ton of them here. And today we're doing something exciting, so I'll bring you along with me. Um, the plan is we're gonna do one of the underground haunted tours. So the catacombs, vaults, whatever you wanna call them, 
if you've read one of my faves, City of Ghosts by V. Schwab, you will recognise where I'm going, because uh, it's featured in this book. It's somewhere that Cass goes herself. Yeah, so we're gonna visit probably, I don't know if it's Mary King's Close or Southbridge, not sure. Basically, we're gonna go under the city. I don't know if there's gonna be any light at all. I'm assuming they've got some artificial lights there, because we're going in the afternoon. We're doing a daytime one. You can do the nighttime one, but the nighttime one includes actors who will literally scare you half to death and jump out at you. And anxiety. I'll probably have a panic attack. So, we're doing the daytime one. Also, my grandma and my little brother are going to come in with us, so. Yeah, that should be fun. So I'm excited, because I've never actually been under the city yet, and I've lived here for a good five years. So that's what we're going to do. I'm not sure what else we're going to be doing. Oh, actually, there is an annual zombie walk every year in Edinburgh. Basically, it's a massive pub crawl where everyone dresses as a zombie, aka Walking Dead style, and... <laughs> We're gonna go and see that. Well, we're not gonna do the pub crawl, but at 7 p.m. a bunch of zombies are meeting up at Cowgate and we're gonna hopefully go and see um, some of the zombies, so that should be fun. Um, yeah, not sure what else we'll do. There's, there's always something, and I mean, it's the weekend before Halloween, so there'll be lots of events and things on today, so I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna do, but I'm gonna take you along with me, and then my family are leaving tomorrow, so I'll try and get some reading done then, but yeah. Let's go see some more of Edinburgh. Before you came round, my heart would never be much faster. Before you came round, I was ready to slow down Before you came round I was heading for a small disaster Before you came round I was ready to blow me down Hey guys, so it's now Monday so I didn't vlog anything yesterday, but Saturday we had a very busy day, as you saw. We didn't actually end up doing the underground tour, though, because we weren't very good at planning that one. Super popular on Halloween weekend, it was all booked out, so we didn't end up doing that. We also completely missed the zombies. <laughs> we were around that area at that time, didn't see any zombies, but it is a pub crawl, so there were probably in the bars, and a lot of the bars in Edinburgh are kind of like underground, so we didn't see anyone, which is a damn shame. We did have a lot of fun, we did some touristy stuff. So my family left yesterday, so I had the whole day just to catch up on some reading. I also watched like the whole series of the new Chilling Adventures of Sabrina on Netflix. I really liked it actually. A few people on Twitter weren't really into it, but I kind of liked it. Very different from the show, uh, the original show but it was a lot darker, it was very gory and grim, and I just loved that the Spellmans were Satanists. Although, don't quite know why Salem couldn't talk, that's like my only bugbear, but they did have the character of Ambrose, which was cool. He was my fave. Not just because he was British, but I do love that Aunt Hilda was British, she's also another of my faves. So yeah, I'm probably gonna watch season two of that when that one comes out. Um, I don't like Riverdale, and I know it's set in the same universe. I found Riverdale just really boring, I couldn't get into it. I found this one a lot better. So now let me know if you've read, if you've watched that <laughs> and uh, your thoughts on it. I thought it was pretty good, but I did manage to fit in some reading as well because it's technically now, which is on day five, crap, but I read some stuff, so let me talk to you about it. So I finished The Graces by Laura Eve and I ended up giving it like a 3.5. I was enjoying it as I was reading it, but once I finished it and kind of reflected on it, I was like, mm hmm, it's a little bit predictable, a little bit tropey. Also, our main character is kind of a little bit shitty towards other girls, you know, she thinks she's not like other girls, that kind of thing. Hate that. Uh, so for that reason, I'm giving it like a 3.5. It was fast-paced and witchy, and it did kind of leave it open-ended, but then I then I realised that there's a second book. If you've carried on in the series, let me know if you what you think of the second book. Um, but it was just okay. Um, so I was completely wrong because I thought this was about a group of girls uh, that were a part of a coven and a school. And we have this character called River who kind of wants to get in with them. It's not, it's actually a family, like a magical family called 
you know, whatever, Grace. So there's three siblings, there's a set of twins, uh, one female, one male, and then we have a younger sibling called Summer, who sh this character River becomes friends with. She really wants to kind of figure out if they are really witches, because they're very mysterious, but also very loved, they're very wealthy. So she kind of gets in with them, and chaos ensues. I can't really tell you much more than that. Um, kind of the origins of all the wicker and stuff, I'm not really sure just how kind of close to it being true that was. Um, but it was very spooky and atmospheric in parts, but some of it was a little bit emo. <laughs> and I was a bit, just a little bit tropey, you know? Uh, I read a Goodreads review that kind of compared this to Twilight, you know, kind of how Bella really wants to get in with the Cullens. It's that kind of vibe. It's very melancholy in parts. Um, it was just okay. I'm giving it, like I said, a 3.5. I enjoyed the writing style and the atmosphere in this book. But then, I finished Slow Cool Girls by Claire Legrand. I was reading this till real late last night. Like, I couldn't put it down. Oh my god, I love it so much. 4.5. No, 4.75. Not quite a 5. I don't know why, because it had everything that I wanted. It was kind of like a mashup between Summer of Salt, because it's set on an island, and it's witch, not witchy, but magical and whimsical. Cross with Catherine Arden's The Bear and the Nightingale, you know, because folklore. <laughs> so basically this is, um, I think you'll know probably what this is about, but if you don't, we're following three young girls who live on an island which a monster lives on also, that preys on girls. And this, there's a certain family, kind of like the Graces, um, there's a certain family um, that are kind of host to this monster and bring him his prey basically. So we're following that girl who is the one who's kind of the host for the monster and has to s sacrifice these young girls to him, you know, become friends with people and then, you know, lead them to their deaths. And then two young girls who are in the same kind of age group and go to the same school and stuff, they all know each other. Um, one of them has a younger sister that goes missing and the other one has a best friend that has gone missing also so they've obviously been the prey of this monster on this island and it was so good guys oh my god the writing style absolutely loved it it wasn't a five just because I found that I wasn't all that invested at the beginning but that might have been because I did start listening to it on audiobook before I picked up the physical copy well ordered the physical copy because I love it so much um but yeah I highly recommend it if you're into whimsical ma like magical stories also great rep in here for sexuality definitely and diverse also in um, race so we have a character in here who's asexual I've not read a book with an asexual character in it before that I think has been as well represented as this one was and also we have a bi main character and there was some lady love and it was just such a nice relationship that didn't take over the whole plot of this book because it very much was a kind of an adventure horror so atmospheric and creepy oh my god this was dark but in the best way 4.5 read it read it read it read it this could possibly be my favorite book from this witch thumb because i know a bunch of people have read it i know rhiannon loved it as well so yeah, I definitely want to read Furyborn now. I have Furyborn and I haven't bloody got to it. So this has given me the kick up the ass to try Furyborn because it's the same author. So yeah, loved this one. So if we're gonna do the little wrap up of the week, first off, I finished The Witches of Eastwick by John Updike. Oh my God, this took me for like ages. And y'all know how I feel about it. I gave it like a two star. <laughs> Then I finished The Graces, as I said, 3.5. Saw Kill Girls, 4.75. Maybe a five star. I finished it yesterday. I still need to, I still need to think about it, but very high score if you're going by the Goodreads star rating. I uh, loved it. <laughs> and I am at chapter 16, page 127 of The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. I'm absolutely bloody loving this one. Also, I didn't realise the audio book is on script, so I have been listening to it as well as reading it. I'm still buddy reading it with Anna, and yeah, I've got a lot to go, but I know if I just sat down, I would devour it in one sitting, but I'm trying not to, because I'm buddy reading it. We're absolutely buddy loving this one. So that's all I read this week, guys. So not the best reading week, but you know, I've been busy and stuff. Um, so I still have these to read by the end of the month. <laughs> So if we're going just by my Witchathon TBR, I have these two on there. This one's the Candlelight Challenge and this one's the book that's going to make me warm and happy. And also for my Heritage one, I have an audiobook of Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table on script that I still need to listen to. But that's only a couple of hours long, so 
that's cool. And for my wheel of TBR, because I need to finish these by Wednesday, is The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, aka JK Rowling, and Mean Girls Club Volume 1, which is tiny, so I can do this, it's fine. Um, but yeah, slightly scared, because by Wednesday, hopefully, I'll have finished this, finished these two, and finish this, it's not gonna happen, is it? It's not gonna happen. But I'll let you know how I get on in next week's reading vlog, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this week's vlog and hearing about what I'm getting up to and what I'm reading and all that. So I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you care to do so. And I will catch you in my next video slash vlog. Bye.